Okay, we're going to start today. 29b, Chav Tesimut Beis. We're starting five lines from the bottom. Amar Vida Meshmol. Amar Vida Meshmol. Vida says in the name of Shmol, Shmol was his teacher. This is kosher lift on anything that's a relish, that's a dip that goes along with bread. It's not eaten. It's not eaten alone. So Kdei Lechol by the amount of this item that you need for the Erev okay the, uh, the, the amount is the amount that you would eat together with bread and, you, and that's all you need if it was some sort of hummus or something, you would just have a dip. You would just have the amount that would go with the bread for two meals. Kolsheinaliftan. Anything that doesn't go along with bread, that means it's eaten alone. Kadelechalemeno. Then you need a full portion. It's not what you would eat together with bread. It's the entire meal, two meals now, would need to be from this item itself. It goes on. Basuchai, raw meat. Used to eat raw meat. That is eaten independent. It's not eaten together with bread, so you need a full two meals of raw meat. Basitzali, if it's roasted meat, then it's machlaikas. It's roasted meat is um the steaks, hamburgers, burgers, I should say. Um, is that eaten together with bread or is that eaten alone? Rabba Merkadei Lechel by Rabba says that it's eaten together with bread. So how much bread? How much you would eat together with bread? Rabbi Yisrael Merkadei Lechel Imen Rabbi Yisrael says no, it's eaten alone, and so you need a full amount of two meals of just this roasted meat. Amar Rav Yisrael Rav Yisrael says Mina Aminala. How do I know that I'm correct? That roasted meat is eaten alone. Because the Persians eat uh, pieces of meat, they eat it, roasted meat, they eat it without bread. Amalaya Abaya, Abaya is a student of Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef is arguing with Rabba. Abaya tells his teacher, So you follow what the Persians do because are they the, are they the majority of the world? But Tanan, it doesn't go by the majority of the world. We have a Mishnah that it follows each individual. Big the Aniyim, La Aniyim is talking about when clothing becomes tame. So poor people, a patch is already considered an article of clothing. So a patch that's three at spice, by three at spice, three finger breaths by three fingers, that is already considered a clothing. But Big the Ashirim, La Ashirim. But rich people don't use patches, so for them a cloth would be three tfachim. Three tfachim would be a would be a cloth, like the size of a handkerchief or something, a small towel. That would be a cloth. But we don't follow the rules of uh, of a rich person's clothing for the poor for the poor people. In other words, for them, it would already be a cloth and it would be considered a utensil. Um, let's see. Do you want to send uh, Eliezer the link again? Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm on my phone. So. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, okay. So... So what are we seeing over here? That you follow the individual. So what are you telling me? That the Persians, uh, because they eat meat raw, so that should be the rule for everyone. We don't follow the rules for everyone. Um, we follow each individual. Maybe we could, go, we could say that we're just being strict. Over there we're strict that a poor person's clothing is already, uh, considered, is already considered clothing. Um, uh, at a smaller amount. And over here, we're going to say that um, 
you need a larger amount of food because of the Persians. In other words, because the Persians use, uh, eat roasted meat without bread, that means you need full meal size pieces of meat in order to have an Arab. So maybe we're going Lechumra in all cases. The Gemara says that's not so. We actually don't call Lechumra by the Arab. Because Vatanya, Reb Shem ben Elazar, Reb Shem ben Elazar, he's a student of Reb Meir. He says, Ma'arvin l'chaylo l'zakin k'dei m'zayne. For an older person or for a sick person, they don't have such a big appetite. How much do you need for them, for their Erev? For them, you only need how much they would eat. Right? What do they have? Uh, yogurt and banana or something. Uh, they have a small, smaller meals. So, so for them, that's already an Erev. We're not machmer that you need the size that uh, that uh, um, a younger person would eat or what a Persian would eat. Ola Ravson, what about someone that's a glutton? He eats a uh, huge portions. So the even for him, you only need an average person. He's, you go. In other words, we're going lenient. We're not going strict. So what are you telling me that I need large pieces of meat? For the for the of roasted meat because that's what the Persians do. It's kasha. Rabbi has a strong question on uh, on Rabbi Yosef. It's a kasha on Rabbi Yosef. Rabbi Yosef's whole proof was that the Persians do it. Rabbi is proving to him that you don't have to follow the Persians. And uh, you're going to tell me that you were just strict. It's not how it works. We have Raya that we're not strict. Okay. The Gemara now asks. Does Reb Shimon ben Elazar say that you really don't um, follow the individual? Uh, you follow the individual lenient. Um, but when it comes to a Rav son, when it comes to a glutton, you don't have to follow what he needs. You can go by the average person for an Arab. You don't need huge portions. You can just follow the uh, what an average person would eat. But Tanya, but we have a brisa following. Shimon ben Elazar Shimon ben Elazar says, "Eig melech habashin pischei What happens is if a person passes away and he's he's in a house, so everything in the house becomes tummy. Everything under that roof becomes tummy. What about the doorways? So all the doorways become tummy. Unless it's very clear which doorway is going to be used to, for the corpse to exit. If that's decided which doorway is going to be used, so then only that doorway is tummy. In other words, its pathway out of the house becomes tummy. So if there's a, if there's um, what's what's the it has to be the the doorway needs to be four tefachim normally for it to be considered a doorway. What about if Oig Melech Abashan Oig the giant um, is in a house? So in order for the one doorway to be used, which then rescues all the other doorways of being tame, that doorway needs to be the size of Oig Melech Abashan, his size, which is a lot more than four tefachim. What was it his ankle was 30 on the side, you know, so it must have been uh, huge. So we're looking to free up the other doorways from impurity by saying that there's one doorway that would fit him, and that's the one that's going to be used. But it would need to be Mamish's size. So the Kashi here is, what's, what are you telling me, Rav Shem ben Elazar holds that when you have a giant, that, or you have a glutton, that you don't, that you don't follow his appetite and you just, uh, it's enough to have the appetite of, a, of an average person, a meal of an average person. And that would be enough. When it comes to a corpse, uh, we don't follow the average person. It needs to be the size of the individual, even though it's like uh, an anomaly. That's such a big person. So, Vabaya. Hasam Hechali Avid. Vabaya responds to this. Um,
Abayah says, it's not a kasha. He says, what do you want him to do over there? Do you want to cut the, the fellow up and um, to take him out of the doorway? Over there, you need a doorway that fits. Over here, we're talking about food that would create shvisa, that would create a person's uh, location. And we're saying that an average person's food is good enough. But over there, I need a practical, I need, I need the practical doorway to get the person out of the house. And if I don't have that, then, then I don't free up all the other doorways. Okay, Bailu, they have a question. We're continuing on with this um, impurity in the house and the, the freeing up the doorways. The yeshiva has a question. Pligi Rabban Nolad, Rab Shimon ben Lazar, Shem ben Lazar said that in order to free up all the other doorways from impurity, so it needs to be the size of, like Melech it needs to be the person's size. Do the, do the rabbis argue on Rav Shimon ben Lazar, or do they agree with him? It says, Toshma, come and listen. Dama Rabbi Barba Chanam, Rabbi Yechanan, Oig Melech HaBashan, Pischei Barba. Rabbi Yechanan says, Rabbi Barbachana says the name of Rabbi Yechanan that the doorway for that would be Tame for Oig Melech Abashin is only four tva. Very clear. The rabbis disagree with, with Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar. Igmar says it's not a real proof because you're not telling me what all the other doorways are. Hasam Dikab Sachim Ketanim Tuva Vikachad Avi Arba Vadir, all my other doorways were even less than four tfachim. So when we're going to have to break down a doorway, we're going to break, break the walls to, to make it larger. We're going to break the one that's the largest already so we can get through this. And uh, if it's smaller than that, we're not going to break that one. So it's assumed that this is the one that would be the doorway. When they're going to need to widen the doorway to get the person out, they're going to obviously widen the one that's the largest. Yeah, these are calculations that they have to make. How do you get in? <laughs> How do you get in? That's the question. There's no doorway. He got in as a baby and he grew up. That's what happened. It's like the bathtub. How do you get the bathtub into the house uh, through all the doors? Uh, they have to put it in before they put the walls on. They, um, yeah, okay. Amrabhia Baravashi Amarav. Usually it's Ravchia Barashi. Here it's Ravchia Baravashi. Yeah, it's the same. It's a Ravchia Barashi is a student of Rav. Ma'arvim bebasachai. It says you can use raw meat. Okay, we had that before, no? How much was there? Kadei lechali menu. It was eaten without bread. Amar Ravsimi Barchia. Ravsimi Barchia says ma'arvim bebeitzim chai. You can make an Arab with raw eggs. This is um, this is uh, like for Chazanim before before the high holidays, the gargling uh, raw eggs. So v'kama, how many eggs is considered a meal? Am Rav Nachman by Yitzchak Sinai Amar Shtayim. Nachman Yitzchak says that Rabbi Yosef holds that it's two. If you remember it in the brachas, we had a discussion between Rab and Rabbi Yosef. Who should be the next Rosh Hashiva? They said Rabbah because he was Iker Haram, he uproots mountains, or Rabbi Yosef because he's Sinai. He, it's as if he received the whole Torah because he had such a great memory. That's called Sinai. He has all the traditions in his memory. So um, then he forgot a lot of things because of an illness or something. But he was still called Sinai. So when Reb Nachum Yitzchak says, Sinai Yamar, he's referring to Reb Yosef. Reb Yosef says that two eggs would be a measurement. Okay. Next Gemara we had in Brachas. Most of it was in Brachas. Quoted in the Mishnah, if someone can use items for an Erev, things that he himself personally, he's not able to eat. So, in that uh, discussion, we said, let's say someone takes an oath 
from nourishing food. So we said that what's nourishing food? We said all foods are nourishing except for water and salt. So we said, except for water and salt. Also, that, I'm sorry, that was the discussion about what foods you can use for an era. So we said, what's considered food? So all foods are considered food, except for water and salt. If someone takes a vow from food, from nourishing food, he's allowed to eat, uh, he's not allowed to eat anything except for water and salt. That's not, doesn't, didn't go under the category. Umar says, Melachamayim hudle ikri mazen. Sounds like water and salt, that's considered not food, but everything else is considered food. Let's say that this is a question on Rav and Shmuel. Um, the Rav and Shmuel Dami Tarbayo, because both Rav and Shmuel say, They say that the bracha of Barimin and Bezainas is only said on the five grains. Now, the Gemara's understanding that Mazainus is nourishing food is the same as mazain. So when we said Hanaider mina mazain, according to Rav and Shmuel, if he takes a vow that he's not going to have any any uh, that he's not going to have any benefit from mazain, he really should only be not allowed. He really should be forbidden only from the five grains. But according to the to the uh, Mishnah that we had, if someone takes a vow from Muslim, he can't have any food. Now, where are we saying this? Because we're making this comparison between Bairimin and Muzainus and Muslim, and that's the same word. Both of them, it uh, means nourishing food. So the Gemara asks one second, did you not have a question on this once before? We already had a question in Brachus. We asked the question on this, a very simple question. Well, it wasn't such a, it was a contradiction. But we found that, um, that you say a mezainus on other foods. Which food? Rice. You say mezainus on rice. That was the whole rice sugya. Whatever the case is, what are you asking me a question from Rav and Shmuel? We don't pass like them. We, did we not slug them up? Did we not ask a strong question on them? We have prices that you say mezainus on rice. According to Rav and Shmuel, you only say mezainus on the five grains. That's not true. So the Gemara says, Okay, uh, it's not a problem. We'll slug them up again. We'll ask a question uh, from this, in this mission as well. We had a question in Brachas about rice, and we have a question over here. Over here it says that if someone takes a vow from from nourishing food, he's allowed to eat, he's not allowed to eat any foods except for water and salt. According to Rav Shmuel, he should be allowed to eat all foods except for the five grains. No. He's not talking about mazin food. He's talking about specifically nourishing food. Or it's not nourishing. The word would be satisfying food. The person really only gets satisfied from a meal if it's a meal of five grains, of those, of any of the five grains. And then, if it's, you have to divide this up like this. If it's mazain um, itself, then it's the five grains. But if it's zaini, if it's just um, something that's nourishing, then everything is nourishing. Everything is nourishing. So we're making this contrast between five grains, which is mezainus, and anything that's nourishing. Anything that's nourishing would include all foods. So we're, we're, in the end, we're answering the question on Rav and Shmuel. Rav and Shmuel said they only see mezainus on the five grains. Fine, that's mezain, that's mazin, but that's not kol hazon. Exactly why there's a difference there between zan and mazin, but that's what the Gemara is doing. It says zan would be anything that's nourishing, and all the foods have nutrients. So, except for water and salt. The Gemara says, 
Rabbi Barbachana again. In the name of Rabbi Yechanan. We had him once today, right? And Rabbi Barbachana discussing, in the name of Rabbi Yechanan, discussing Eig Melech Abashan, that the doorway was only for Tvachim. We have him again. Rabbi Barbachana says that when we were following Rabbi Yechanan to eat the fruits of Ganeiser, that's the, the fruits around the uh, Kinera. When we would go, they lived in Tveria, by the way. So when we would go over there to eat the fruits, when there were a hundred people with us, each person would collect 10 fruits. And if there were only 10 people with us, each of us would collect a hundred fruits. And each, each of these hundred would hold a basket that holds um, three saw, big basket. Rabbi Yechon would eat all the fruits. It's a hundred, three hundred saw of fruits. Is it 300 or is it even more than that? Oh, it's a lot of fruits. And then Rabbi Yechon would say, Shvosad like time Yuna. Says, I swear I didn't eat anything satisfying. Like I'm still hungry. Okay. So what are we saying over here? We're having other foods that, uh, of course, um, the five grains would be satisfying. But now we're saying that the other foods are not satisfying. And someone take, we said someone takes an oath from food. He is, he is forbidden from all foods except for water and, and salt. Turns out that all these fruits don't satisfy either. See from Rabbi Yechanan that he, he ate all these fruits. He wasn't satisfied. What are you telling me that all foods are satisfying except for water and salt? Obviously, the fruits are not. So the answer is Ema Mezayna. I guess it means that he didn't eat a meal. He didn't eat a meal. That's what it means. Okay, similar to our, our answer before, that there's a difference between mazain and zan. That a mazain is a meal of the grains, and this is still nourishing. So it's not a question that uh, if foods are nourishing or not. Yes, they're nourishing. It's just not a meal. Okay, Amar Rav Huna Amar Rav. A statement from Rav Huna in the name of Rav. Rav Huna is a student of Rav. If someone takes an oath that I'm not going to eat this loaf of bread. Then he finds himself wanting to use this bread for his Erev. He could use it for his Erev. Why can he use it for his Erev? Well, he never said he's not going to have benefits from the bread. He just said he's not going to eat it. So when he puts the bread in that location for his Erev, he doesn't actually need to eat it. He just, it needs to be fit for someone to eat it. If it's not chazi for him, if it's not fit for him, well, it's chazi lachrina, someone else can eat it. I, he's getting benefits from it. He never said, I'm not getting benefits from bread. I said, I'm not going to eat it. So he can use it for his Erev. He's not going to be allowed to eat it because he took a vow that he's not going to eat it. But that can still work for his Erev. He doesn't need, he doesn't need to be able to eat it. We had in the Mishnah. Um, uh, someone that can't eat a certain food, it's, it's still um, still good. Kikazu alai. Let's say he says, this bread is forbidden upon me to have any benefit. The emphasis here is not the zoo or alai. The emphasis here is eat or benefit. If he says, I won't have any benefits from it, then he can't use it for the Erev because he's going to be getting benefit from it. What benefit? That becomes his location. He can now walk an extra 2,000 amas. May say the Gemara is a question. If someone takes a vow from a loaf of bread, can use it for his Erev. 
It's not such a big question. You could resolve it easily. Say he took a vow not to eat from it. The Gemara says, one second, my love, is it not? The Omar Allah, that he said, I'm not going to have any benefit from this bread. And you see, he's still allowed to use it for his era. It's an assumption. But that's our question. That's the Gemara's question. The Gemara says, Lai Damarzu. No, he said, I'm not going to eat it. It's also logical to say that he said, I'm not going to eat the bread. The Ketani Seifa, because if you look further in that Mishnah, that Brisa, Amasai, when is it? When does he say that he can use it for his Erev? If he says, he takes a, he swears that he's not going to eat it. Avalomar alai mai. But let's say he says, I'm not going to have benefit from it. Obviously, you can't use it for an Erev. The Gemara is leading up to a question now. So we're trying to prove that the Brisa that says, someone takes a vow from a loaf of bread, that he can still use it for an Erev, it's because he said, I'm not going to eat it. And the proof is, because if you read further, he says he, he swears that he's not going to taste it. That means it's he, he, the, the, the pro, prohibition that he was putting on himself was about eating, not about benefit. He says, if that's the case, that let's say he would uh, forbid the, the benefit from it, then he wouldn't be allowed to use it. That's what you're making it look like. If that's the case, is Yossi here today? I can't see. Yossi, you there? No. We have a uh, uh, this Gemara is similar to a Gemara that he learned last year. Okay. Ad the Tani Kikar Zu Hekdish, a Marvin Leba. It's an interesting logic that the Gemara does now. What it does is, is it, it, um, it shows me a contrast in in halachas. One halacha is that if someone takes a vow not to eat a loaf of bread, he's allowed to use that loaf of bread for an Erev. Then it tells me a halacha where someone is not allowed to use a loaf of bread for an Erev. Now, where am I not allowed to use a loaf of bread? It has different options of what it can choose, but it wants to show me a contrast. Now, we're just developing a theory now that if a person says, I'm not going to eat it, he's allowed to use it for an Erev because he's, still get, he's, he's permitted to get benefit from it. But if he would say, I'm not going to get benefit from it, then he wouldn't be allowed to use it for it. That's our theory. Gemara has a question now. Because the, the Mishnah, the, the Brisa itself makes the contrast. It says, if someone says, I'm not going to eat it, he's allowed to use it for Erev. But if he says that this loaf of bread is hectish, then he's not allowed to use it for an Erev. That's what we're about to see. The Gemara asks on that, if you wanted to tell me a contrast between when you're allowed to use it for an Erev, when you're not allowed to use it for an Erev, then you should have taken two examples that are much closer. One is if he says, I'm not going to eat it. Another one is if I'm not going to get benefit from it. Why did you have to jump to Hektish to find the prohibition to use it for an Erev? It must be that because the example that was closer is actually permissible. It goes like this. If so, is like instead of, instead of teaching kikazu hektish, instead of teaching that if this loaf of bread is hektish, he can't use it for an air because he can't make an air with things that are sanctified. Why don't you divide the original case itself into two? When do we say you're allowed to use a day or zoo? If he says, I'm not going to eat this. But if I say it's prohibited on me, that means I'm not going to benefit from it. You could have said that. It must be that you're allowed to use both. Ravuna would respond to you. He says, What are you suggesting? You're trying to suggest that you say you can use it for an Arab. Kasharesha. You look at the Brisa, the Brisa clearly says, Amasai, 
when are you allowed to use it for an Erev? If you said, I swear that I'm not going to eat it. What are you, what are you trying to do? You're trying to make a, a, um, a, you're trying to imply something that would go against what it actually says. So Rafunov says, it's obviously missing words. This is what, uh, this is how you should read it. If someone takes a vow from a loaf of bread, you can use it for, uh, use it as an air of a filo amara lie. And even if he says, he, even if he says that it's forbidden on me I, to have benefit from it, he's still allowed to use it. It's as if he said, I'm not going to taste it. Why would he be allowed to use it? Here, now we're a little bit stuck because he is getting benefit from it. There's two possible explanations here. Rashi. gives two explanations, one at the beginning and one at the end of the Gemara. Beginning of the Gemara, Rashi says that maybe even though he's having benefit from this loaf of bread, why is he allowed to use it? The benefit that he's getting is not a normal, it's not, it's considered, it's not derech hanasa of food. What's the derech hanasa of food? Is to eat it. He's not eating it. He's getting what the what's the benefit that he's getting that he can walk two thousand amas, but that's not what the way you benefit from food. It would be like he's using the food to uh, you know to rub on his skin. It's it's considered shleik kedera chanasa. It's not that in order to get food benefit benefit from food, it has to be the 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 normal benefit, the way of benefiting from food, which is eating. This is considered shlikader chanasa. You're getting food not in the normal, you're getting benefits from it not in the normal way, and that could be permissible. Um, that's not how Rashi concludes. Rashi concludes a different shot. He says, when is a person allowed to make an Erev, an Erev Tchumen? Only if he needs to be able to walk for the mitzvah. That means that he needs to walk 4,000 amas out of his city because his teacher is there, he's giving a shir. He wants to go for a mitzvah. And mitzvah is lovely, honest, nitno. A mitzvah is not considered a personal benefit. So when he's going to do the mitzvah, it's not considered a benefit. The benefit that he gets, that he can walk extra for a mitzvah, that's not his own benefit. That's something for the Ebeshter. So that's why, even if he takes a vow that he's not going to have benefit from this, he's not really getting benefit. It's just the mitzvah. And the mitzvah is lovely, honest. The mitzvahs aren't a personal benefit. That's what Rashi concludes on the bottom. He says, Zay Iker. He says, that's the, uh, that's the main chat. Okay, so that's what we said right now. If he says, Kikar Zu, uh, if he says, even if he says a lie, it's as if he said, Shvur Shleit Mena. He come up and Kashala Ravuna. But Ravuna said that it doesn't work. Ravuna says that if he says, if he takes a vow, not to have benefit from it, that he can't use it for an Erev. And now you're saying that he can use it for an Erev. It's not considered benefit. So the Gemara answers, that's because Rav Huna Paschal's like Rebbe Lezer. Rebbe Lezer is Rebbe Lezer ben Horkines. Usually we don't Paschal like Rebbe Lezer ben Horkines. Rav Huna is following the opinion of Rebbe Lezer ben Horkines. Somehow that's going to help. And that's going to save him from this contradiction. The Tanya Rebbe Lezer, Rebbe Lezer says, Shvosh layechel kikazu ma'avim le'ba, kikazu alay ain ma'avim le'ba. So he has a support. But from the other b'risa, it would seem, it would come out that you're allowed to use uh, a loaf of bread that you took a vow not to have benefit from. The Gemara asks, Miyam Rebbe Lezer, Hachid, does Rebbe Lezer really say this? But Tanya, we have a b'risa that says exactly the opposite. Zeha klal, this is the rule. Adam ma'isir atzmei ba'echel. If a person makes himself, makes food forbidden to him. Ma'arvin le'ba. Here is when he, he makes the, the, the prohibition that he's not going to do an action. He's not going to eat it. So you can still use it for a native. Why he doesn't have to eat it? As long as it's fit for someone else, it's good enough. He's just getting benefits from it. But if the food is forbidden on the person, 
that means that he's not going to have any benefits from it. Ein ma'arvin le'bot, then he can't do it. Rabbi Lezer argues on this. That was the opinion of Rabbi Lezer before, Rafuna's opinion. And in this brisa, that was this is the opinion of the Tanakama. And Rabbi Lezer himself says, "Kikazu alai ma'arvin le'bot." He argues on that. He says that even if it's, I can't have benefit from this bread, he prohibits any benefit from the bread, then you still can use it for an Erev. This was supposed to be the support for Ravuna, who says the opposite. And now we're seeing Rabbi Leza doesn't say what, what Ravuna wants him to say. Kikazu hektesh, ein marvin liba. Kishen marvin Okay, that's the conclusion of that. The Gemarian says, Shreitan I believe the Rabbi Leza. Yeah, you just found the contradiction in Rabbi Leza. It's two students of Rabbi Leza that said over different things in its name. But nevertheless, that was the opinion of Rabbi Leza. And uh, at least according to the way Rafuna has the tradition, and that's why he ruled like that. Excuse me, Rabbi Smith. Yeah. Does Rashi's final comment find its way into Halakha? Yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question. Does Rashi's yeah. final comment find its way into Halakha? Ah, oh, you see, that's exactly your question, right? <laughs> yeah, and that's probably always beats me to it. I remember um, places, I, I don't have it clear exactly where, but I remember um, that we do sell mitzvah slav lihanis nitno. Um, would it apply exactly in this case to the Erev as well? I'm not sure. But I think that's how we hold mitzvah slav lihanis nitno. Thank you. Okay. Don't see it. They don't quote it here. In, in the back of one, one of these commentary Gemaras. They don't quote this. Okay. <clears throat> so we're holding now Marvin Lenazer <clears throat> Beyayin. Lenazer can use wine for his Erev. The Nazar took a vow from wine, but nevertheless, he can use it. And the Yisrael, the, the, the Mishnah went on, Yisrael can use Truma, even though he's not allowed to eat Truma, but he can use Truma for his Eirev. The Gemara says, Masnitsen like a Beishame. This Mishnah doesn't fit with Beishame. The Tanya Beishame, we have a Brisa. Beishame says, Ein ma'arvin le Nazar biyayin. A Nazar cannot use wine for his Eirev. He can't drink it, he can't use it. The Yisrael be Truma, and he can't use, the Yisrael can't use Truma. Truma is the, with the gifts for the Kayan. He's not allowed to eat it. So he can't use it for his Eirev. Basil says yes. Uh, 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 Nazar is allowed to use wine, even though he can't drink it, but he can put it for his Eirev. And Yisrael can put Truma. He's not allowed to eat it, but he can use it for his Eirev. That means his, lo his, new lo his location of Shvisa uh, could be adjusted based on this food that he's not even allowed to eat. But other people can eat it. He can put it there. Don't you agree? We're on top of Lamed Amid Beis. That a, an adult can make an Erev on Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur has the same laws as Shabbos. He's not allowed to walk. Uh, 2,000 Amis out of the city. But let's say there's someone coming. Uh, it's going to be a Shia. It's not common. We don't listen. <laughs> You know, uh, maybe a Kol Nidre, not a, well, not, it wouldn't be Kol Nidre, a Neila Drasha. It's going to be a big Drasha. You want to go to to here, the, the, the Drasha on Yom Kippur. So before Yom Kippur, you would put an eight of 2,000 Amis. Well, you can't eat it. No one can eat it. You're not such a child. But don't you agree that you can make an eight for a Gadol by Yom Kippur? Why would you be allowed to do it? Well, a child could eat it. So, Amalehen, Aval, say, yeah, it's true. We agree. Amalehen, Kshem Shema, Avil Gadol, Biyem, Kippur, Kim Avil, Nazar, Biyayin, Yilashol, Bitshuma. So, there you go. 
if you can make an Erev on Yom Kippur, because a child would be allowed to eat it, so you can, a Nazar can make an Erev with wine, and the Yisrael can make an Erev with Shumi, he's not a lady, either, but the, uh, someone else can eat it, the Kayan, or, the, or uh, someone that's not a Nazar. Strong, uh, strong claim. Beishamai, what does Beishamai say? This is an interesting concept that it takes effect on Bein Hashemashas, the Erev. Now, because this food I'm allowed to eat during the day, so Bein is this um, mixture, it's this twilight zone. Really, I could, maybe I could still eat it. But maybe it's already Shabbos. So the maybe I could still eat it allows for when Yom Kippur comes in that it takes effect, even though it, 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 both statements are, you can't have both together, it's impossible. But, but this concept is being applied here that because I'm allowed to eat it right, at, right before it becomes Shabbos so, or Yom Kippur we're dealing with, so therefore, it's uh, valid for an Erev. But by the Nazar, he's not allowed to drink wine. So it's not Riyami by Diyayim, so it doesn't work. That's the uh, explanation for Bishame. Come on, the Lekha Hananya, this must not fit with Hananya. The Tanya Hananya Yaimer, Hananya teaches, Brysa, Kolatsman Shem Bishame, Leah Maidim Be'er, Vat Shiyetzi, Mitasav Chokli, Tashmish, Blasham. Hananya says, according to Bishame, a much stricter opinion. It doesn't have to do with the, with the wine of the Nazar. He has a much stricter opinion of, about Bishamai. He, he, his view, his understanding of what Bishamai holds is that it's not enough to put two meals there. According to Bishamai, you have to move your house. You have to get a moving company and move all your furniture and all the things that you need, your bed and all of that. If you put that there, then it's going to be Shvisa. That's going to be your location. According to whom does it go the following? If someone puts for his Erev, he's wearing dark clothes. When he makes the Erev. Now, another way of making the Erev is not to put your food there, but to actually stay there. So when he comes back, and then he goes home. The following day, he wants to walk even further than that. He wants to walk an extra 2,000 numbers. That was his location when Shabbos came in. When he goes back, he shouldn't be wearing white clothes. If he was wearing white clothes, he can't be wearing dark clothes. I thought that what he was doing was he was putting his uh, clothing there and that should be his Erev. But from Rashi, it doesn't look like that. Rashi looks that he's wearing dark clothes when, and he stays over there. Then he goes back to his house and he comes back. So we're asking, according to which opinion would this go, that there's a limit on, on what type of clothing he's, he's wearing, the color clothing that he's wearing when he goes back the following day. Come on, who does that go like that? You have this uh, restriction. Amar of Nachmi, it's Hanani Hivali B'Shamay. It's Hanania, according to Beis Shammai. See, it fits better if he leaves the clothing there and then he comes back with white clothes. So those aren't, aren't the clothing that he needs. He's supposed to have the, clo the, the clothing that he needs that's there. Because according to Beis Shammai, you have to move out there all the things that you need for Shabbos, which includes a bed and clothing and all of that. And here he has the wrong set of clothing. So the Gemara says, one second. You make it look like the whole issue is the color clothing. According to Hananiah, that's not enough. It's much stricter than that. You need to have your bed. You need to have all of those things out there. This You have to learn it like this. If you made the Erev with white clothes, but he needs black clothes. Then he can't go out even with the white clothes. Come on, who does that go like? Let me see exactly if we did that correct. 
Um, yeah, the, 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 the way that we said in the, how Rashi says it is simply um, that he went there and waited with black clothes. He's not supposed to come back the following day with white clothes. So the Gemara asks, that's the issue. He needs to have his all his uh, all his um, according to Bishamai, according to Hananya, he needs to have all his utensils out there. So the Gemara says, if he needs the black clothes, then and he doesn't have them there, then that's considered like he doesn't have all his utensils. That's what we're saying. Who does this go like this is Hananya? So it's so it's so um, uh, restrictive, so limited that it needs to be the, exactly the type of clothes that he needs. That he needs. You can only imagine this with the with the socks. <laughs> There's one uh, one white sock, one black sock. They say um, the Yiddish comedian Jigen. So someone with white shoe, one white shoe, one brown shoe. He says, why don't you change your shoes? So he said, I went home, but at home was the same pair, one white and one brown. <laughs> okay. Simcha uh, Saimer Bechulen. Simcha says, Simcha was a student of Reb Meir, and he holds, he argues on the, on the Tanakhama, the Mishnah. The Tanakam and the Mishnah said that a, a Yisrael is allowed to use truma, is allowed to use uh, what's really only permissible for a Kayin, he's allowed to use it for his Erev. Sumcha says no, he can only use regular mundane food. He can't use uh, truma. Um, so the Gemara asks on that because there were two cases that the Tanakam allowed. The the two cases were an, a, a, a Nazar using wine and a Yisrael using truma. Comes along Simchas and he argues on the Yisrael using truma. He doesn't mention the Nazar with the wine. Bila Nazar biyayin leipale. But Simchas doesn't argue with the Nazar. He doesn't argue with the, with the, with the Nazar using wine. The question is, my time, what's, why not? My gives a very interesting answer. The reason why not is Efshid the Mitchell on because he can be Mater Neder. He could be Mater Neder. He can't become a Kayan, but he can take off the Naziris by asking a Chacham to be Mater Neder. He says, one second, I, I know he can't become a Kayan, but he hachi chumanami Efshid the Mitchell but let him be mater neder from his designation of making this truma. I made this truma, and now I will go to the to the chacham. Be mater neder. Truma is like a neder. Like I, I'm like you can remove the designation of truma by going to the chacham. It says What do you gain when you mater neder? You can't eat it anyway. Now it's tevel. You can't eat it even if it's chulin. Okay, it's not truma but you didn't make it any better. You can't eat uh, food that Shuma wasn't taken from. Shuma says, no. He is mater neder. He says, this was Shuma. He should be able to be mater neder. And then he'll be allowed to eat this. One second, but it's Tevel now. He says, no. What he does is, in my house back home, I have a cabinet. And in that cabinet is another package of grain. That grain or that bread, whatever, that should be Shuma. So he'll designate in his mind, or I'll say it, that the food that's in the cabinet, so-and-so in his house, that such and such a cabinet, that that should be the truma, and he, then this would be, should be allowed to be eaten, Sumcha should allow it. So Gemara says, There's a problem with doing that. When you designate food that's not right in front of you, and you don't know who's back home, someone may open the cabinet and say, oh, I'm going to eat this doesn't say truma on it. You weren't even there to put a label on it. So it's called shleimena mukaf. Mukaf means that it's right. It's not right next to you. And, you, and 
a chaver would not do that because he can be setting someone up to, to, to stumble. Why doesn't he divide up the air of itself? He can say that this used to be Shuma, but he'll not be Matinether, and now it's not Shuma. And then he'll designate part of the air of Shuma and part not, and he'll be able to, the part that's not, uh, that's not Shuma, he'll be allowed to eat and it will be acceptable air. Marianne says, the less Beshura. Once you do that and you designate part of it to be Shuma, and it's Minamuk if it's right next to you, the problem is, is that you've just diminished the shear, and your Erev was exactly the size of an Erev. Where says, my Paske? How do you get so, uh, Paske is like precise. Is that really the whole Mishnah? It's only talking about this case where he has only exactly his Erev. Ela Simcha Savala Kirabanan. Simchas holds like the Rabban and Dami called every Shumi Shum Shvos Gazer Al Alav Ben Ashmashes. Okay. Um, the, what the Gemara is saying here is that Simchas wouldn't wouldn't allow you to take Truma again Ben Ashmashes, and therefore you can be Matined there, but you can't make Truma again. So that's why he only argues on. The truma part, but the yayin for the nazar, that he says you can be matinet because there's no more fixing that you need to do benish Let me try to get to the tadat. Kaman also had the tanan. The kum does it go? This that it was taught in the Mishnah. Yesh amra kolafi mashu adam. There are some say that it follows the specific individual. Malay kaim to mincha. When a kayan, or when there's a kayan does kmitza, what's the size of a kmitza? Whatever fits into his fist. When the Kayan Gadol does the Kataris, he needs the two palms of his hand. What's the size of two palms? Whatever fits into his hand. If someone drinks a cheekful, what's the size of a cheekful? Whatever fits into his cheek. It's each individual according to his thing. And when it comes to an Erev, it's a meal for two. It's a, enough for two meals. Come on, who does that go like? Sumchus that says that it needs to be exactly for him. One second, maybe this argues on Rabshim ben Allah that we learned at the beginning today. What about a Ravsan? Uh, a glutton. We said that we don't follow his measurement. It doesn't argue. Because the Ravson doesn't count. But, but what really counts, what we're looking at, the glutton, we're not looking at. But what, what are we looking at? That the older person or the sick person, for them, we follow their own measurement. So that would fit with what we learned here, that it's each person's own measurement. Okay, have a good day.